no, I'm Ashley Jenkins. After all the leaks reported about Nintendo Switch last week, it looks like Nintendo's fighting back. Now, if you're unaware, last week we reported about a couple of Switches that ended up in the wild, along with a copy of the new Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Uh, at the time, it was unclear about how the leaker actually got a hold of the Switch. Now, as it turns out, he bought a stolen one without realizing. Well, allegedly without realizing. Uh, Nintendo has now taken the Switch back and they fired everyone involved with the theft. Nintendo sent a statement to IGN writing, Nintendo has determined these units were stolen in an isolated incident by employees of a US distributor with one system being illegally resold. The individuals involved have been identified, terminated from their place of employment, and are under investigation by local law enforcement authorities on criminal charges. So yeah, they're not messing around with switch leaks. And as I recall, it had something to do with the barcode. They were able to tell exactly where it came from. If that had been blurred, would have got away scot-free. Wasn't for you, kids. Now, FYI for all you future Nintendo Switch owners, since you've only got about a week and a half left before it launches, you can now claim your Nintendo Switch ID ahead of time over at Nintendo's website. Even if you've already got a Nintendo account, you probably haven't set your user ID, which will be what you use for playing Switch Online. You just go to accounts.nintendo.com and you can claim Super Mario XX69 all to yourself. And still, uh, in the FYI department, Switch game download sizes have finally been revealed. And from the look of it, you're gonna need an SD card if you haven't already bought one. Games are still on the small-ish side compared to some of the downloads we're seeing these days. Breath of the Wild is 13 and a half gigabytes. Mario Kart 8 is eight gigabytes and the Dragon Quest Heroes games take up 32 gigabytes combined. But considering the Switch will have 32 gigabytes of internal storage with only maybe say 30 or so of those left after the firmware installation, you might want to just start shopping around for an SD card before launch. Or if you really like the cartridges, keep buying physical. For Honor has only been out for a week, but according to new data, that first week was huge, at least in the UK, that is. GFK Chart Track, the watchdog for retail sales in the UK, has reported that For Honor was the number one game last week, beating out Sniper Elite 4, GTA 5, FIFA 17, and Battlefield 1. Apparently, it was the biggest new IP launch since No Man's Sky, which uh, probably is not a game that people wanted to be compared to, but that was an enormous launch. No one can deny that. If you still haven't heard about For Honor reviews, that is kind of because they're still trickling in, but it looks like we're getting closer to a consensus. Right now, the game is holding at a pretty steady 80 or so on Metacritic. The entire gaming world is waiting to hear what Bethesda is working on next, and judging from some new comments, turns out Oh, they're working on quite a bit, which is kind of exciting and terrifying. Speaking with IGN, Bethesda Game Studios boss Todd Howard revealed that the Fallout and Skyrim studio is currently at work on seven different projects. Now, before you get too excited, a handful of those are already known. One is their next mobile game, the other is Fallout 4 VR, and the last, Skyrim for Nintendo Switch, but that still leaves four games that we don't know about at all. According to Howard, two of the projects in particular are bigger than anything the company has done in the past. So who knows, maybe we'll see one or more of these seven, four new, seven games, four new projects, whatever, at E3 this year. Maybe if we get, if we're very good boys and girls, we'll see two of them. Now, those wishing for positive news, for a change, about the Half-Life franchise from Valve have yet another bummer this weekend. It's now been confirmed that another one of the head writers for the series has left Valve. Eric Wolpaw, former writer on Half-Life, Portal, and Left 4 Dead, has exited the company, according to a tweet from another former Half-Life writer, Mark Laidlaw, who left Valve a year ago. When Laidlaw left the company, there were many understandably curious about what this means for the future of Half-Life, considering everything we've heard about Half-Life 3 maybe not even existing anymore. Well, this doesn't give you too much hope in that regard. <sighs> we've got a release date on the new Han Solo movie, so that's at least like one bright spot. In a post on the official Star Wars site, it was revealed that the still untitled movie is slated for release on May 25th, 2018. Principal photography officially began February 20th at Pinewood Studios in London, and the movie will explore the adventures of Han and Chewie before the events of A New Hope. We can also expect some encounters with a young Lando Calrissian who will be played by Donald Glover. Phil Lord and Christopher Miller of Lego Movie fame are directing the movie, and the cast includes Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo, as well as Woody Harrelson and Amelia Clark. So it's gonna be a good six months for Star Wars fans, starting when episode eight hits theaters at the end of this year. 
A film version of Metal Gear Solid has been in the works for years now, and good news, it looks like the director is still jazzed about making it. Whenever that will be. Uh, Jordan Vogt Roberts, who signed on in 2014 to make the movie, recently finished up Kong Skull Island and was asked about the future of the Metal Gear movie while he was on a press tour with good reason. I'm sure everyone's wondered where exactly that is with Hideo Kojima leaving Konami. His response made it pretty clear that he's still really into making the film. After lavishing praise on Hideo Kojima, understandably, Evoked Roberts told Collider that he is working on the script for Metal Gear. He added, that is a property that I will fight tooth and nail to make sure is done properly because it's so easy to screw it up and so easy for a studio to try to make it into G.I. Joe or try and make it into Mission Impossible or try and make it into something that it's not. Metal Gear Solid needs to be exactly what it needs to be, which is Metal Gear Solid. Looks like the upcoming Batman movie still needs a director. According to The Hollywood Reporter, negotiations have broken down with prospective candidate Matt Reeves. Reeves is currently in post-production in the upcoming War for the Planet of the Apes, and prior to him getting the directing offer, Ridley Scott and Feta Alvarez were also being tossed around to direct. Of course, Ben Affleck was initially thought to direct the movie as well as star in it, but he ultimately decided not to direct. The Hollywood Reporter says that despite the lack of a director, the studio is intent on making the movie no matter what. Is there a bad director signal maybe that Commissioner Gordon can turn on? Because DC really needs it. Now, uh, reviews for Logan are starting to roll in, and some are already calling it possibly the best comic book movie ever. Hugh Jackman's final turn, unless we can talk him into being in Deadpool movie, has scored a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes so far. The Toronto Sun said that Jackman isn't just giving us the definitive X-Men movie, it could just be the definitive comic book movie, which is a pretty high praise. USA Today called it easily the best Wolverine outing. Logan is the Dark Knight of the mutant-filled X franchise, a gripping film that transcends the comic book genre by saying something important. Not everyone was a fan, though. It's important to acknowledge that. Time Magazine panned the movie, saying, The grim side of human nature is all over James Mangold's Logan, but that doesn't necessarily make it a good movie. The movie, which also stars Patrick Stewart returning as Professor X, hits theaters March 3rd, the same day as a Nintendo Switch, so it's going to be a really busy day for all of us. Now, in a scandal involving the world's biggest smartphone maker, a Samsung executive has been arrested on bribery and embezzlement charges. Authorities are looking into whether Samsung's vice chairman, Lee Jae-yong, provided millions to a close friend of South Korean President Park Yong-hye as part of a corruption scandal that's rocked the country. Lee's grandfather founded Samsung and he's been the de facto leader of the company since his father suffered a heart attack a few years ago. The arrest is huge news in South Korea given that Samsung is its most visible company and makes up a really big part of the country's economy. How big? Well, Samsung's electronics arm alone accounts for one-fifth of South Korea's exports. The case is part of a broader investigation into contributions that dozens of Korean companies gave to Choi Soon-sil, a confidant of President Park. The scandal has rocked South Korea with huge protests leading to President Park being impeached and her powers suspended. So yeah, it's a big deal. That's all the news we have for you guys today. Well, I say all, but that was an awful lot of stuff that happened over the long weekend. What do you think of all the stories? Let us know in the comments down below to make sure you get more news from every corner of the internet. Make sure you like this video, and if you're new to here, make sure you subscribe to the now. Easy. Easy peasy, like that. Lemon squeezy, right? A South Korean president, Park yun hee of what? Park yun hee 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 Okay. Uh, Park Gyeonghae. Park Gyeonghae. Okay. Yeah. Okay.